All right, so I will call the meeting of the Common Grammar School Committee, School Committee, to order. We'll get it started. All right. Well done, Michael. Thanks, Phil. Yeah. I need more practice, I guess. It's your it's your first virtual meeting and your first meeting chairing. That's a, that's you're betting a thousand. Yeah, this is intense. Um, all, right. all right. So let me just pull up. So the first thing on the agenda is the uh, public comment, right? Right, so there is no real public comment here. So what we'll do is we'll have Shelly just go over the highlights of it. We've all seen it, but there'll be the highlights of it to remind us where we're at and give the viewers at home the chance just to get the basics of the budget. And then um, we can discuss that as the committee after any public comment of that. Is that? All right, all right. Good. So, okay. okay. Um, so I did share a summary document uh, with the school committee. Uh, we are looking at a budget to approve today of, uh, with a 2.46% increase for a total town appropriation of $2,367. <laughs> uh, we made adjustments for expenditures based on actuals from the prior three years, as well as taking input from principals and administrators in regards to operational and programmatic needs and wants. Um, we have additional funding sources, such as revolving funds, grant monies, and school choice funds for a total operating budget of $2,676,054. Um, could, could you say that again for the record? $2,676,054. Yep. Thank you. Sure. Um, we've included funds for uh, wage increases for all personnel, IAs and teachers, as well as non-union staff, including central office, custodians, secretaries, etc. Um, the budget, the total budget, the 2.6 million does include one new full-time teaching position. However, that will not be funded from the general fund or local appropriation, as that'll be funded by special education revolving account which is funded through tuition revenue for students who attend uh, the WINGS program at Conway Grammar. Uh, so we do have salary and wage increases for teachers. The salary increase for teachers at this point is just a benchmark. Uh, we're looking at $37,000 increase based on a potential contract settlement, which includes column and step changes because we are still in negotiations with union teachers for next year. Uh, IA salaries are going to total about $16,000, and that um, is based on the settled contract that they have. And then we have wage increases for non-union personnel of about $5,000. Some of those funds um, are, some of those salaries are funded from alternate funding sources, not all local budget, but did want to give you those numbers so that you would know what we were looking at for increases. Um, we have some general fund expenditure increases and then some decreases to help offset where we're increasing. Our 2.46 budget increase is a really healthy budget. It's not um, over beefed up or expending anything, but we did need to add some items back in. So we have teacher mentor stipends um, and curriculum development stipends that we've added in. Those total uh, $4,000 uh, for curriculum planning and then our teacher mentor program. We're increasing our general supplies by 2000 and then are starting a new copier lease potentially next year for a $4,000 addition to the budget. And then we have some maintenance and security increases of just under $15,000. That is to cover uh, general right. repair and testing, some custodial work that needs to happen over the summer, and then additional costs uh, for the new door entry, the keyless fob system. Um, and that is based partially on actuals and partially on needs of moving forward and will be continued in the budget year to year. So to help fund these expenditure increases, we did make a, a decision to move um, one IA position onto the early, early childhood revolving account from the general fund. That freed up $18,000 from the general fund to allow for those additional expenses. Uh, we had a change in our nursing staff, which allowed for a reduction of almost $4,000 to the general fund. And then we do not have any retirement payouts for FY21, so we have a reduction of $13,000 in employee separation costs. 
Uh, the only other item to mention that is a significant increase um, involves two funding sources, the general fund and the school choice budget. Uh, we are expecting an increase in our special education transportation next year, uh, which is an increase of almost $30,000, of which the primary source will be funded through school choice with about $7,000 being funded from the general fund. Any questions? No questions. Comments? Well, I, I mean, I guess my question or comment would just be, um, you know, I hope that it gets to dry on this before we have to take it apart, um, if we have to take it apart. Or, I mean, I, I just, there were supposed to be preliminary state numbers that came out today that show preliminary projections for cuts to Chapter 70 and Chapter 90. Um, but I didn't see anything that came out. But some of the projections that I've been hearing have been just completely horrible. Um, yeah, so you're right, Phil. We, we are going to have to look at this. Um, we're definitely going to have to look at it again. Uh, but what we've been doing at the other elementary schools is moving forward with approving what we've got on the table right now and agreeing to make decisions when we do no more concrete numbers. Um, there was an economic roundtable today from the state that was broadcast. It was all kind of just talk. Everybody has a different opinion on where they think things are going to be. Um, various, I think, heard in that call that they're looking at a five billion dollar call. Is that what they said, Darius? Yeah. So, so basically, you know, kind of going down that road. So they kind of looking at process, we're kind of saying, isn't it a waste of time that we're doing this when the, the budget's going to change so much? So by law, we have to have a public hearing on the budget to allow the public to comment. Our meetings, for the most part, are open to the public for them to comment anytime they want. And we kind of do that. But basically, the law says you have to have a formal hearing on the budget to allow comment. So that's what we're doing right now. So we have the general, we have the administrations put the general needs of the district. Um, given the circumstances of the economic cir circumstances, which, you know, there are numbers that go from three to five to even higher up to 10 percent um, reductions to the town, we're not going to be able to make any adjustments without more information. And so yeah. and and I explained to the other school committees, we and when you go to reduce a budget, if we have to reduce the budget, it's not a if there's not a list of. There's not a list of the tools in the toolbox and you lay them all out and you say, well, we don't need the saw as much as we need the hammer. You need both tools. So then we got to talk about, you know, it's, so sometimes you can able like, you know, I don't need the extra screwdriver, but you know, you can do some of that kind of stuff. But I'm using this as the analogy, but you know, if we make cuts, it's not that easy. So depending on how much money we have to cut, you know, if it's 3%, that's one thing. If it's 7%, it looks very different than the three percent. It's not the three percent plus, um, and so I don't know. You know, if you want me to kind of just keep going in down that kind of, we can close the public hearing portion of it, or just kind of carry it through. I don't know how you want to follow the agenda. Um, and then we can talk about what our plans are about how we want to look at it and timing I, of it. Yeah, no, I I think the, as far as the budget goes, um, you know. I, I, I thought it was really good, a really good at, uh, budget, and um, you know, I, I think I, I I know the finance committee was very pleased with it. I know the town uh, grand poobahs were very pleased with it, and uh, you are one of the grand poobahs. <laughs> I'm, 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 forget the grand and the ba. I'm just the poo. <laughs> So, so I mean, the budget itself it, it was was put together with great care, and I appreciate the job everybody did on it. And uh, um, I think I think it's a, a really good budget to bring to town meeting. Um, you know, it, it, um, it, it, and you know, as far as far as what Darius would, would do, do, you know, my, my it, uh, um, I, I hope I hope that we in Conway don't have to cut your budget. It cut any like real real meat you know i hope we don't have to make any cuts at all we're probably the last town that's going to ask for that um 
And, and, and I myself was very saddened to see how two towns that I know of, you know, already wrote you letters demanding it. Um, and certainly Conway was not one of them. Right. And, and so it, it's, it's really premature to demand that of you. But, but you know, if it does come to, to making cuts that are truly painful, I just do, I, I do hope that you, you know, present equally horrible options for school committees to choose from. And, um, you know, just, you know that, that that would be it. I mean, right. I, and so I think a, a decision like that should be hard, and it should be uh, painful. Um, and and, uh, and I just I don't want you to be the, like I said, the uh, the, the willing hangman at your own execution. So uh, <laughs> nice. So that that's 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 what I got to say on that. Well, so, I think. The fact that we're not doing layoffs and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that that's a huge thing. I mean, I I mean, I don't think that we should, but if they really want serious budget cuts, <coughs> let's kick it to the towns to have to pay unemployment and all that. Well, then we'd then kick it back to us. But I mean, if they really want those kind of cuts, that's an option on the table, I would think. Right. And so, you know, basically what I, I had a conversation with the town administrators yesterday and, and basically my request to them to take back. So the, let me kind of what Phil was talking about, for those of you who haven't followed the, the politics of all the four towns is Sunderland sent out a letter basically um, asking all departments to be prepared or pre be able to present budgets with a 5% reduction. And that includes the 5% reduction of Frontier which is about a $400,000 and change cut. Um, and then, um, you know, 5% of the elementary budget. So um, the Deerfield actually asked for a reduction in the budget prior to the COVID outbreak. And they were looking for a smaller amount. They were looking for $30,000. Now you have to understand that their budget is probably twice the size of the budget, if not even larger. Um, so the $30,000 was not a lot. They were just asking us to tweak it so they weren't, you know, there's new information. Now that we've gone to the COVID, they said, well, let's wait till we get the real numbers, but we'll, you know, likely be back for more um, because that's before the economic downturn. So, you know, we basically have to have the towns digest the numbers from the state. I did get the early information from the round table this morning um, and a quick, in a briefing from it, that the state is prepared to go into late June without a budget, if not into July, and start the year off on a one twelfth budget, which um, I understand the basics of is they take your last year's budget, they pay you one twelfth over 12 months um, until a budget is passed. But to get through the portion of summer, that won't kill us. It'll kill us on the, Shelly will be killed um, because she's got a small staff and one twelfth is more work. Um, it's, it's just Shelly, and I made a joke about it earlier. She's in her first year, doing five budgets like three times. <laughs> so, um, and that, you know, she doesn't know what a normal budget, she doesn't even know what a budget cycle looks like, let alone a normal easy one. And this was gonna be an easy one. We had good balanced budgets that were, weren't were asking a lot of the taxpayers and were healthy for schools and uh, we won't go down what we had. Um, so anyway, so the, this particular budget, we may not actually adjust it until June, if not later. You know, um, because Phil is right, I'm not gonna just offer up changing the services we're providing the towns. You know what I mean? And so, I mean, you guys can offer it up and then I have to follow suit, but you understand what I'm saying? I think the, the mentality is the towns will get a number of what their deficit is due to um, a reduction in revenue to the state. They're gonna have to figure out how are we going to make up that reduction and at what percentage per entity in their town. You know, I think Sunderland just said very basically they wanted to kind of get on everybody's radar. And, and I had follow-up conversations with the select board there. And they were more of us like trying to be proactive, not trying to be reactive. They understand that they just wanted to kind of get everybody's radar to start the conversation. But you can't just say 5%. Okay, so because 5%, we want a dollar amount. You know, put the budget together. This is what we're aiming for. And I'm saying it to Phil as the select board member. This is what we're aiming to have. This is what we're asking each department to give. What, and then communicate with that department. What does 
if, if schools have to give up, you know, $500, you know, in, you know, police have to give up $100, what does that mean to your thing? And then if we say, well, the $500 means we have to cut first grade, <laughs> we can say, okay, maybe we'll go back and ask the police to give up, you know, to cut $150. You know, I'm getting these fake numbers, but just you, you can play along. You understand what I mean? But so but the other side is that smaller schools can only cut so much. You know what I mean? Like if 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 it was the gross numbers that are there, that are out there, you can only go so far before you give your stuff mandated by law. And so it's again a, a conversation. And then what is asked of frontier? I just say this again. I'll have to fill. You know, you got to be careful because the frontier board is going to say no, especially if one town. You know, it's got to kind of be a balanced approach by the towns, especially. I mean, this is unprecedented times. Um, and, you know, the legislature is talking about they're going to work together and create one budget that then will get approved by the governor. And I don't know how that's going to work. It's going to be a whole new world of politics. But instead of House one, then goes the Senate. The two are going to work together to expedite the process. Um, and then the state's got to determine, you know, from their process, I'm sorry, I'm going backwards here, but they're going to have to determine how much money is going to go to education. So remember all that Student Opportunity Act? Well, that was subject to appropriation. Oh. If they're down $5 billion, guess what? You can't give all that money to, to schools this year, or not give, but fund schools in that way. So they're going to have to reduce funding, and then they're going to have to make up for a certain amount of funding to their urban areas. And the federal money that's coming in is going through Title I, which commonly gets how much Title I money? We don't get any, right? Any zero. So federal money is not bailing out Conway. Um, Frontier will get a little bit, and I'm saying that just because our schools are together on this, um, or education is together on this. So, so you know, Frontier gets some, but not you know, no bailout. It pays for maybe a, a half a teacher or, or a full teacher, that kind of thing. Um, so maybe it'll be a twenty thousand dollars or something. I don't know. It will come out to be, but it's not the bailout. So, you know, it's going to be interesting what the state does. What it's going to do with its emergency rainy day fund, which they have, a, I think they have three billion. I forget what the number is, but so they might be able to make up a good portion of it to ease the pain of all the. But they have to decide how much. And then the other concern is, if we're, when we make, if if we have to make cuts, we also have to hold on to some money. So we can't just say like, let's just throw all the school choice money at it because. If the state comes back and says, oh, we projected wrong, and now we're going to have mid-year nine C cuts to the towns, and the town's got nowhere else left to cut, they're going to have to go to the biggest provider in town, which is a school. And so then we have nothing to cut except services. So you want to leave a, you still got to leave a little buffer. And on top of that, I don't really want to jump in and say it, we also reduced our budgets, our uh, revolving accounts, to kind of a, a far lower thing than Sure, do you want to talk about I don't, we kind of left the public hearing. There's no public here. So we're kind of shifting and talking about that. So I don't know if yeah. you want to show, I think Elaine, are you taking back over his chair? Yes. Um, you want to do that or how are we going to do it here? Do you want to close the public hearing? Yeah, let's close the public hearing. And then the next thing on the agenda is Shelly anyways, and she can talk about where we're at with those other things. All righty. And just really, to... oh, hold on one real, real quick. We didn't approve the minutes from the last meeting in February. All right. No, hang on. You're closing the public hearing, then you're opening the general meeting, which is approving the minutes. Yeah. So that'll be the first oh, business okay. on the next one. Okay. Do we need a motion to close the public hearing? Yep. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Okay. Second. Yes. Third. Third. All right. All you in favor? You have to do yep. a roll call vote. Oh, yeah. Uh, Denise, close. Yes. Bill? Yes. Michael? Yes. Myself. All right. It's unanimous to close the public hearing. And now we're on to approving the minutes from February 13th, 2020. Can I ask one question before we do that? Sure. So I was just peeking at the agenda and I actually don't see a vote on here to approve the FY21 budget, but I think that is supposed to happen at this meeting as well, correct? Darius, yes. are we still live? Yep. Yep. Okay. So the, the school committee meeting is still live outside the public hearing. So okay. it will be throughout. Okay. We have to, it's one of the rules we have to do. So um, 
So this is one of the formalities. All the school committees kind of follow what Frontier does. Frontier has to have a public hearing, and then immediately afterwards, they have to vote a budget to go to the towns as a formal budget. We don't have to vote a budget going to the towns. We can just say this is the budget that we're presenting moving forward. I mean, I guess we could vote it tonight. I think it's it, it's said within the it's it's known it's a typo it's a typo error. We're going to be coming back to this budget anyways. I don't think anybody's going to give us any grief on that. All right. We also said at the at the pre at the budget meeting that people actually came to to ask questions. We did say that we were going to vote on it formally today. Yeah, so we'll be we'll be okay there. And yeah. quite frankly, if someone wants to, you know, the open meeting violation, then we we're going to revote this. We're going to revisit this budget anyways. But at least it gives everybody that this is where you agreed upon to start. Um, but you would vote that in the regular meeting, not during the public session. Okay. Does that make sense? Sure. Sure. Uh, at any old time, or are we do we have to open the the regular call to order, or what I would do? Now you're now you're calling the regular meeting to order. Yep. Yep. And you're going to go about the business of that, which is review the minutes, financial yep. statement, public comment in general, and then we'll discuss the budget again under unfinished business. Okay. So can I get a motion? Uh, well, let's open the meeting at 630. Um, and let's review and approve the minutes from February 13th, 2020. Can I have a motion to approve those? Yes. Second? So yes. All right. Do we need a roll call for everything? Yep. No, what a pain in the butt. All righty. Can I get a roll call vote for to approve the minutes? The easiest way is just read down their names on your list okay. there. All right. We'll go. I approve. Um, Denise? I approve. Phil? Yes. Michael? I'll abstain. I wasn't present at the last meeting. All right. So uh, three in favor, one abstain. Uh, all righty. <coughs> We have financial statements and warrants, which we already signed. We did. We did. We signed the warrants. Thank you for that. I'm sorry if it was difficult for, I know a couple people had a hard time getting on. Um, hopefully next month it'll be smoother if we need to continue with this process. Um, and hopefully we won't have to send two files. I have had run into some issues with um, Sunderland and Deerfield that if the file is too big, I have to split it up. So you're having to look at two emails. So I'm hoping that that doesn't happen. But if it does, I will be sure to communicate and let you know. So I appreciate that. Um, the other thing with warrants that was on my summary is that we are looking to have one member designated as a signer. Um, this will allow us to have accommodations in the event that we can't meet in person and we can't get three signatures electronically. Um, the other school committees have moved forward with this. Mass General Law does allow school committees to designate one person as long as you are all provided the opportunity to see the materials, which you will still get. Um, it just means that if, um, Elaine, you're the chosen one, if as soon as you sign, we can release them to the town and we don't actually have to wait for three signatures. So okay. that coupled with the um, electronic signing will be helpful for school closures, not just right now, but I think also over the summer. And then um, if we have any winter meetings that are canceled and we don't get together, it'll mean that you guys don't actually have to come into this office to sign, which I think will help expedite things. So I'd love it if you could vote and elect one person to be the designated signer on warrants. All righty. Uh, I'm happy to do that. If uh, somebody would give me a motion to nominate me to be the one signer on the warrants. I'll nominate you. Thank you, Phil. <laughs> Can I get a second for that? I'll second it. All right. Uh, Denise, can you give me a vote on that? Yes. Uh, Phil? Yes. All right, Michael? Yes. And I will also. All right. So it's unanimous that I will be the one signer on the warrants. Thank you. And if everyone can still sign electronically, it doesn't mean that you can't. It just allows me to move things along as soon as I have Elaine. So, okay. Um, 
And then Darius, do you want me to go into the COVID-19 budget piece or do you wanna talk about that in conjunction yeah. with your updates? You can, um, I just, the only thing I wanna follow up on that last part is that, so if it was, was, if it was clear to everybody, I don't know if we'd lost Michael there or not. No, he's, he's somewhere. Um, is that uh, our, our long-term plan is that you'll be able to sign everything electronically I don't, did, did you say that clearly, Shelly? Maybe I was I didn't to... because I'm still, uh, Adobe Sign, I don't think will work long term. DocuSign might work. So I, before we commit to that, like we got to test some things out, but ultimately it would be the long term goal to do it electronically. Right. So that you can all review them and then sign them. Like, that'll be, that's the long term goal that we share with the other meetings, but we're running some problems out of <laughs> the, the file sizes. Um, yeah, I think. Why don't you give an update to um, the COVID-19 update is the, so we had our joint meeting and, um, you know, it was really about everybody and we didn't really get to kind of zero in how things are affecting Conway. So I think, um, Shelly, if you go through with the cuts of the, you know, the, not the cuts, the uh, use of the revolving funds and what that will mean for our financial future and how that affects this particular, you know, now this budget season and next budget season. Yeah. So right now it's um multi-year impact. We don't know what the impact to 21 is yet with the school closure, but we do know that our revolving funds are going to be impacted by the closure right now. We did talk about this at the joint meeting, um, but particularly at the elementary level, we're looking at preschool, out of school time and school lunch accounts because we did agree to continue to pay all staff, including those who are hourly and work less than 20 hours a week. Um, and we, um, are losing revenue in these programs. We're not charging for preschool right now. We're not charging for out of school time. And if we don't come back, we will actually have to issue some refunds to families that prepaid for preschool tuition or out of school time tuition. And the school lunch program um, is taking a significant hit. And I understand that historically Conway school lunch program has not been the healthiest. Um, and, and certainly we're looking at being in that position. Again, we're looking at the end of year ending with $14,000 loss in school lunch. So you mean financially healthy, just for the viewers at home. Yes. Financially healthy. <laughs> <laughs> good point. Uh, really good point. Thank you. So, you know, we are going to have to make some decisions about how to handle that. We're going to need to pay those staff still off of general funds. So it right now, in order to um, see what savings can be realized, we have frozen the general fund budget so that only necessary purchases are being made. And that's something that Kristen and I can always be in conversation with or she can get in touch with Darius or facilities. Um, you know, administrators can certainly start conversations about what needs to be spent. And obviously, if school does come back, we will have to think about what, if anything, needs to be unfrozen for spending. But the idea with freezing spending is that we can support these revolving programs that are losing tuition, but we're still paying salaries. And so we can also see how we can free up some other funds from school choice, for example, if we can offload some school choice things onto general fund that hasn't been expended yet. It will allow us to free up school choice money that will help support any cuts that we have to make for next year. You know, right now, like we said, we don't really know. Um, Would it be helpful for me to share my screen with the, uh, with those numbers for the committee? Do you guys still have those numbers? Or do you need to see them now when we're talking about them? From the revolving funds? Yeah, the revolving from memo that yeah. you wrote. I can present my screen and just show that. Do you guys want to see those numbers just for a review? If you don't have it. Um... You just want to demonstrate your technical wizardry? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you see it? Yeah, it's up yes. now. Ooh. Awesome. All right. Yeah, so, so this was shared. I did not share this again prior to this meeting. I had shared this prior to the joint meeting. So... For early childhood, we're looking at a $25,000 revenue loss. And while at the end of the year, we're still going to have a really healthy balance in the early childhood account, um, it will have an impact moving forward because it means that we have less funds available to use the following year. And we've already planned out 
that budget for the following year for FY21. So I do think at the end of FY21, our preschool budget will not be having an issue. But I think FY22, it's gonna force us to be looking to see how we can reallocate some things because the program's not making a lot of money. It's been able to build up some savings year to year, but it's a minor amount. So we're gonna have to think about how much we're depleting that and while I think it's going to be two years out before there's any major impact to that program, it is something that we need to think about now as we're and looking I, at that. And I just want to highlight what you said there, Shelly, that is, you know, the public looking at these numbers, these numbers were slowly built over many, many years. So, you know, I mean, we built a, a cushion so that when you have a rough year or, you know, families on sliding scales and um, can't afford the full payments that we're able to help. Um, support that. So, you know, that's, you know, there's a lot of moving factors into these numbers. It's not you get 15 students, you get 15 students worth of tuition. Some are not paying full price or, or any. So uh, depending on need. Um, so those are just important factors. Um, and then you can see the school lunch number there, about a $14,000 deficit at the end of the year is what we're anticipating right now. And then out of school time, um, Darius, if you can scroll down a little bit, they are going to lose 16,000 in revenue, but still have a healthy balance at the end. And, you know, that program is not as concerning. Um, Janet does a great job. The director of that program, she does a great job of balancing the expenses with the revenue. Um, but she will also have to look at, you know, what they're doing for trips, what they're buying, if they need things and be much more conservative with her budget. Um, so that, that is the biggest concern is these revolving accounts and making sure that any savings that can be realized this year to support those programs and then also support next year's FY21 general fund budget is what we're looking at. Kristen has provided a list of items that, line items that she feels still have funds in them that we can recoup some money from. Um, we need a couple of weeks to let the database and my staff get caught up on making sure that all POs are entered and all bills are in the system. Um, and then we'll have a better idea of what we're looking at for a number that can really be impactful, hopefully, to help with any savings that we need to, cuts we need to do for next year. School lunch, I should mention, will be able to receive some reimbursement through the USDA. However, it's not going to be a lot of money for Conway. Um, you're not serving a ton of meals. Um, and I'm not even sure at this point if it's going to cover food costs, but at least we'll get something coming back in. So those numbers aren't in the projections, but I don't anticipate it'll have a huge impact anyway. <laughs> I'm any happy questions? to take questions or <laughs> comments if anyone has anything. So everyone that's working in those programs at a school time, they're getting paid throughout this and until the end of the school year? That's correct. That's a good thing. It, it is. is. We, Sorry. We, we, uh, Shelly went and did the math as well on, you know, the cost of putting people on unemployment for the amount of time. The cost then gets shipped over to the town. The town would pick up unemployment, and um, it, it worked out. It, didn't, it would certainly would have cost less to do that, but it was a financial decision. Was part of that decision in the sense that it's not given the amount of savings. It wasn't worth doing that to our our people. So, in a way, of yeah. In the amount of people that we're talking about that are under twenty hours and in a small school like Conway is, it's not a ton of people, you know, and. And so it felt right to try to take care of them, given that especially the out of school time program does still have a healthy balance even after this crisis. And the preschool does, too. And our cafeteria people that are still serving meals every day, you know, while we're paying them more than they're working, you know, it, it's worth it. They're doing a huge service to our community. So I feel fortunate that we were able to make that recommendation and that the school committee supported that. Darius, can I mention one thing? I'm not sure, but yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I was just going to say that um, our director of the out-of-school time program, we have her busy all day long, so she's helping out 
with lessons and she's a backup for many teachers so several teachers so you know hopefully that's what happen but if a teacher were to get sick or a family member so we actually have her busy throughout the conway school day every day doing our stuff as well so she's working hard too Okay. That's what I was wondering if there's any way to utilize those people in other roles or, you know. Yeah, and we are. Um, the, uh, the, other, the other person that assists her, she's a IA in one of the other schools. So she's wrapped up in a lot of the work there too. But um, our directors, I've got her doing a lot of different things, which has been very helpful, having an extra person. That's good. Any other questions on the budget? So I, I guess I just have a, a, a couple of questions. So um, the, the first of all, like, and uh, apologize for sort of getting into like budget weeds here, and, um, and to, maybe to clarify for people that the, the reason we've always had town meetings that um, uh, in, in June is because June thirtieth is the is state law has always been state law. Towns have to adopt budgets by June thirtieth. And this time, because of this, for the first time ever, they're saying if the towns can't safely meet, you can you can uh, adopt a month to month bit budget based on one twelfth of last year's spending. And so um, that's going to impact the different the four different towns in in in, in ways. I don't know. Uh, I, mean, I haven't even really got my head around it yet. But um, and, and that's because the towns uh, revenues and expenses fluctuate wildly from year to year. And if it, uh, I don't know if you remember last year, Conway's share of the frontier budget was a double digit increase in assessment. And it had nothing to do with the frontier budget so much as it had to do with one time only income, dramatic income gains for the town. Um, the, the dam on the Deerfield river, uh, by trans Canada came online for the first time since hurricane Irene. And they paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to the town, and a solar farm came on or uh, paid a, a lot, and so th there was a tremendous increase in revenue, which doesn't exist this year. So the town uh, of Conway, um, if if we were forced to do the one twelfth budget, it would be at a spending level which um, was which we can't sustain because we don't have the income. Um, so, but there are other towns that the one twelfth budget would be a financial improvement from last year. So, uh, the, the, and as part of that, there, the, what I'm hearing is that there, of the four towns, there's uh, an appetite to do a Zoom town meeting um, in some of the towns more so than others. And so what would be the implication of some towns in our district uh, approving the budget and then other towns in our district going to the 112th budget? That sounds like a nightmare. Um, to add to the nightmare is the information I was saying I read, and this is fresh off the press, that one of the uh, statements coming out of today's meeting was that the state may not have a budget in time, and the state may go to a 112 budget. And I don't even, there's, I don't completely, I have to go talk to people, I don't completely understand how that works in. So there's a lot of information, you know, coming in, the, in, in that particular state. But town-wise... If you approve your budget in June, it doesn't matter what the other towns do, except, you know, obviously Frontier is different. But well, you were talking about the Frontier assessment. I didn't even think about the Frontier assessment from last year, Phil. It's a good point. It wasn't even on my radar that way. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, mm. I, I know I know town, town Hall in Conway is trembling at the thought of having to go to the 112th, that it would be devastating to the town. Um, so I... Yeah. Yeah, I wonder. Is it so? It's 112 of the exact last year's budget. It's not 112 of the new assessment. Yeah, 112 of last year's budget. Period. Um, oh, what a mess. Yeah, and and uh, um, yeah, the, 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 and, and, as well as the fact that if the towns are allowed to have town meetings, it's almost certainly going to be required to do social distancing during town meetings. Hmm. In which case, in which case, the town of Conway does not have a room big enough to do it in. Um, outdoors, Deerfield's talking outdoors. about having it on the football field at Frontier. Yeah, bring your own lawn chair. Uh -huh. Yeah, that might be the only way to do it. You know, with a sound system, you could spread people out. I, I don't know, but then again, but you, so you, 
The truth is, if you have to do social distancing because there's a fear, a large number of people aren't going to come out. And then you're not really yep. talking about true representation where yeah. people, me, members over 60, say, I don't feel safe enough to go out, you know, um, to this year's count meeting, you know. Yeah. The other side is you might get more, more votes on a, on a Zoom meeting, especially more younger votes. Town meeting outside of Conway, though, you know, other towns are very, it's more gray than it is, you know, um, you know, people can get away from their kids to, you know, spend an evening at a town meeting. So, yeah, interesting. You know? um, so, but the, the, you need to bring out the question of what does this look like rolling forward with the budget? So, I think what will happen is we're, we're going to wait and we're going to see what the, the, the state spits out. As soon as, as soon as we have information to run on, which is basically after the town has information to run on, um, we'll have another meeting to discuss the budget. Um, whether or not that happens before our May scheduled meeting, I don't know. Um, you know, that's, that's the only thing is I thought we would be looking at our May scheduled meeting that we probably have to have a meeting before that. But after hearing today's news, at the speed at which they're moving, it's possible we're not going to have heavy budget talks till June. Wow. You know what I mean? So, I mean, we'll see how things, you know, how it kind of gets unravels, you know, because I think everybody's looking at the data today and they're gonna, you're going to see a lot of articles and feedback and which way is it going and then we'll go from there. Yep. I think, I think, Sally, for you and, and Darius and, and, uh, and, and Kristen, I think the degree of difficulty of your job is like transformed into like Olympic level proportions. So just, uh, uh, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad that you're, I'm glad it's you and I'm sorry that it's you. So <laughs> it's, uh, I'll second that. <laughs> the only part that can say it's amazing is that as soon as we solve one problem, another problem jumps right up. It's like, it's, yeah. it's, it's whack-a-mole. Like we're like, oh, this is going to be fine. Finally, we got through the hard part. We got education up and running and then no, it, it's just, it's been, it's been that kind of roller coaster. Terry, do you remember your first year? You you had a lot of things going on, and I said, "Oh, your second year is going to be so oh, much easier." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "You're knocking it out of the park. Your second year is going to be amazing." Oh, my God! <laughs> Again, I, I, then I then well, I you know, I mean, and then compliments too. I mean, we're going to have Kristen talk about everything in a minute about the education side of things to get, so you guys can ask questions about how that's being unrolled out. But it's been. We're a fortunate district. We are ahead of other people, and it's because of our amazing administrative team. It's because of our amazing teachers who really took the ball right from the get-go. They didn't wait three weeks to get an MOU in place. They didn't wait. You know, you know, they, they said, let's start delivering this right away, and it, that helped in a great deal. A lot of other school districts are having trouble restarting the pump. Teachers just said, this is how, you know, we'll fix it. We'll fix the problems as we go, and that's it takes a lot of faith, um, and I give a lot of credit to our teachers. It takes faith in your leadership to say, okay, we'll go with this. We'll see how this works out. Um, and so I've been really proud of them on that end, let alone as you'll hear um, when Kristen talks about what's happening, um, you know, what the teachers are putting out there. It's, 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 a, it's a, we're doing a good job. And, and while we have to fix things here and there, it's, it's the right direction and the right speed. So, um, so do you guys want to vote this, this, do you want to vote this budget um, moving forward? I yeah, think the towns have something to run off of, and just then to, as a starting point. Maybe so, tentative, we'll call it. Yeah. Can I get a motion to approve this budget as presented for the moment? <laughs> so moved. I'll, I'll make a motion. Okay. Sounds like I have a first and second. I'll make. Okay, Denise, you in favor? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Bill? Yes. Michael. Yes. Did we lose Michael? All right. Michael, Michael you have to go. the way. Yeah. It must be at the top of the hill. Oh, there's the delay. Ah, right. uh, yes. Okay, and I'm in favor, so it's unanimous. We'll approve this budget, realizing we may. Be making lots of changes but anyway thank you for your efforts everybody and 
I agree with Phil. Thank God we have the team we have in place because, you know, I can't even think of. Um, all right. Anyway. We're on to. Uh, public comment is done. Come back here. Update unfinished business. Uh, we already did. We already do our COVID nineteen update. It sounds like. Okay. Yep. Update on capital requests. So, before all of this happened, we were heading in a great, great direction with our playground. Um, uh, a couple of teachers, Paulette Lovecheck and Maggie West, and I wrote a proposal, and Brenna Bean wrote a proposal for uh, some CPA funding to get our playground going. And um, we asked in the proposal for $200,000. And this was before we had, um, we only had one quote. We hadn't really gone far, but we wanted to put in a proposal just to see if, if this was even something that they would consider. So I did get a call from the chair who wanted us to come in. It was sort of lightning speed. Um, because they were under a timeline that I wasn't aware of, but within the next week we were in a meeting um, with the CPA committee and walking out with an approval from them for $250,000 toward our playground, which we were so excited about. Um, we also, uh, I sent a letter to the town administrator, which he passed on to the select board to ask for some money um, from two uh, fund trusts that are within the town um, specifically designated for children with disabilities. And of course we want to get our playground up to ADA code. And um, we thought that there would be a good chance that we might be able to get some funding from that. Although the most of the funding from the CPA um, and then all of, and so we were sell. I mean, we were so excited celebrating that the town was really supporting this. We knew we had to go to town meeting, but at least the CPA um, committee. And um, and then it came to a screeching halt at this point. So we do have a quote. Um, we have two quotes right now, and we certainly will pick up where we left off, but I don't know where anything will stand once we resume, resume we get so, back to school. Can I speak to this point? So, Please. Um, so the this really should be independent and separate from any other budget issues because it's the CPA money is money that's in place and does not need to be raised through um, current or future assessments. Yeah. So, um, and, and, and it's been approved by the committee and by the select board and it's on the warrant for town meeting. Great. Yeah. So great. I mean, that was amazing. There, the, the, the only thing that's happened since then is that there's, a new state program that they've made so that the town could get, uh, set up a revolving loan program for tenants that can't pay their rent do because of this. Okay. Okay. Uh, and, but that would have to be funded out of the CPA fund. And that might impact, uh, it, the, uh, it, it depends how much they want to put towards that, but that might impact what's available to, mm -hmm. uh, to, to whatever, because, um, that's like truly like life and death for like a hundred and something. Sure. Like the town. Um, but the, 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 the only part of that that's sort of unfinished business is that you do have to come back to the select board with a, a specific number request that, right. uh, to take that out of those uh, trust funds um, for the benefit of the uh, of disabled people and all that. So that, that's the only thing that hasn't been done yet because that requires a specific number. Yeah. Uh, a, 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 and, and we, they've all, the, the select board's already voted to do it, um, but, but, that's, but you have to come up with, between now and town meeting, you, you have to come up with a specific number that you want and tie the loose ends together and say, this is the exact number that will take care of this project. Yes, and that was our next step, and it was great after the CPA meeting. I had to wait until I was in service. I had to drive about a half hour, which was annoying at best because my first phone call was to Darius. I said, we just had our CPA committee meeting. He said, okay. And he said, how'd it go? And I said, it went really great. He said, okay, well, tell me about it. And I said, well, we got $250,000 approved through the CPA that he goes, 
<laughs> Do you think I've ever had a principal call me and tell me, hey, Darius, we got $250,000 for a playground project. So that was great news. But that half hour was torture. If we didn't have service. Um, so we're very excited about that. A lot of our, a lot of the work that we need, the big play structure that was done about 10 years ago, um, we're going to keep. But a lot of the work that we have to do is on the ground. You know, the fall zones, it's it's not cushiony enough. The fall zones around the swing and the play structure. And then we don't have any piece of equipment out there that a child with physical handicap could um, could have fun on. We just don't have one single piece. And then the, uh, the slant of um, the hill going up, you know, we'd have to change that. And then the preschool playground is a mess. There's a ladder going up with no slide coming down. It's just gone. And again, during April break, we were going to have um, we, had, we were going to have someone to remove the ladder, but we had to put that on hold because they're not doing that right now. So everyone sort of everything stopped mid track, but we we're really very excited about the progress that we had made so far with the playground project. So, so you don't call that you don't call that a slide. You call that a jump. Like you climb to the top, and you jump off. <laughs> Bruce has got yellow tape on the other side, up the ladder, and on the other side. Um, so that's, that's, that's very exciting news to get that done for the children. This all started when we needed swing pads. We didn't have any pads. And then we realized that, you know, our fall zones were out of compliance and we ADA compliance and the, the preschool area. So, um, we're going to, we're going to get the whole, the, it, what's in the, um, quote is to get the whole, um, basketball court because you know, refinished or redone because that's a mess. Kids are tripping. There's cracks. There's um, so we're really excited about that. So this is really about safety rather than we're going to get a couple new pieces of, of equipment equipment so that children with physical disabilities will be able to have fun on the playground as well. But a lot of this is around safety in fall zones and fall areas. So um, who are the quotes from Kristen? So. We have one quote. I'm sorry, Lane. I don't ha have the first one. It was just from a company that came out to do the pads. And I said, well, let's start. Could you give me a quote? And and they did that. And then the other one was, Darius, help me out, Berkshire Designs. So, so, so basically on a project of this size, you're going to have to bring, you have to have a designer come in to basically to architect the, the slopes and, you know, how everything's going to kind of fit in. And so, Berkshire Design, uh, who we're using for the track, so they kind of been vetted by a committee already in the community. We're also, Sunderland's using them for their playground. Um, we asked them to kind of take a look. He's putting together numbers for me um, to take on this project without having to go out to bid. There's some rules regarding that, that they can do that, this, this kind of size project. So we're waiting, I'm waiting to get that information back from Carlos, who's, who's also has a child at Frontier. So it's, it's a little bit community-based, um, and a trusted firm. So it's a small project on, on the design end. Um, I forget what the cost is, but you know, um, I don't want to rough estimate. I think the cost is under twenty thousand um, dollars to have all the design, and then they oversee the construction to make sure it's being done to to code. Because um, once you open things up, then you, as you guys understand, any kind of construction of that you open up to all the ADA codes to make sure everything gets compliant. So. You don't yeah. want to, that's what we kind of ran into. We ran into, well, you make the swings ADA compliant, nothing, you can't get to the swings through ADA compliance. You know what I mean? So right. it's like you're, you're kind of one, you know, you fix one thing and triples into the other. Yeah. Really dark in my he also, um, he gave us the name of three other playgrounds local that we could go look at that they had recently done. And again, once we can, once we can get out and do that, we're going to do that too. So he's been great. So that was a huge huge win for us that was great do you know Kristen, would that be done this summer yeah. um so i don't think so i think i think that um carlos really came out because the time frame was so quick he said i'm going to give you a rough estimate i have to tighten up my numbers <laughs> things like that um so i don't think it would be done this summer but i also think we can do some things in sections so i think we can do it doesn't have to be done in the summer necessarily i think it could get started this summer okay and so that's exciting news yeah and, and just to add, to that, to add to that so that people understand that so the the, C, the cpa money is the surcharge on your property tax in town yeah 
um, and, and um, which is matched this year. It's matched at 20 percent from the state, which is higher than last year. Um, so, and the um, the other part to that is uh, trust funds that the Conway Select Board are the trustees of. And one of them is the Germain Fund and one of them is the Boyce Fund, which were set up in the 1950s for the benefit of the handicapped children of Conway. Um, and, and so the actual opportunities to spend that money are few and far between. Um, they, we put money to, uh, in that um, for both the ball field and the, the pool uh, for, for specific, the handicapped parking bits and ramps and whatnot, uh, whatever. But um, the, so, so the select board is voted to, with the difference between the CPA money and the total project cost of 300 and something thousand, um, was was uh, going to be paid by these trust funds, so uh, w which is fantastic, I think, and um, just really neat that the the community is willing to support this uh, project way above and beyond what the budget would, you know, sort of off budget, which is really good. So we had a really big. It was great. Um, again, it was such. It was so speedy, and I couldn't actually wait for the school committee too to tell you all, and then it was canceled. But we had. Um, a pretty large crowd for that small area, don't you think, Phil? That night that we, yeah, we had great support there, families, and you know, um, Phil was there, and uh, some staff members, so who live in Conway. That was so that was great. Yeah. So that's good news. Yep. Very exciting. So um, the the other thing under capital improvements would be the other capital projects that. We may have to talk about putting on hold for a year because that might be an area again phil that you know i think the school could put its capital projects on hold given the economic so there's not an additional strain there's only so many pots of money you know what i mean if you don't have to spend one pot then you, then that money can be shifted elsewhere by the select board and finance committee so phil i'm just kind of mentioning it out there to there that's a well i think that's something that we can put on the table early because none of our None of our projects outside of the playground are safety related. They're just right. regular proper maintenance and that kind of right. stuff. And we can go another year on the carpet without, especially they didn't get the use, you know, the spring. Absolutely. So you know, they can get another half, you know, you know another yeah. half year out of it, so to speak. None so, of those projects are urgent. Right, right. So I, I mentioned that for the, as the two kind of combined for capital yeah. projects. I know normally you keep them in different silos, but this year being a, a year like no other, if the number come in high, I think we, we start robbing those other kind of silos of money. Yep. <clears throat> All right, Madam Chair, where are you at? <laughs> gotta, gotta unmute myself. All righty, uh, so we don't need a vote on anything to do with that at this time, right? Correct. Okay, that, that is very exciting. Thank you for going to the, to the um, committee in town because that's a good use of the money because a lot of people in town use that so makes yeah. sense um now we're on to discussion and vote of the following policies which i don't know if anybody's reviewed them so uh, is this the first reading of these policies for you guys i believe it is yes the vote is required on some of them but well, i the have to say I got to say, I did not review them. I don't know about anybody else, but I did not do my due diligence on reviewing them. Um, they seem pretty non-controversial to me. It look, uh, looks like they're just to be removed. Correct. And so... Um, Want to give us the logic of they're, they're out of date or they're not needed anymore? Right. Now, you got the, we have the wrong thing on this agenda. The top list of policies are the ones for the first reading, okay? And they okay. are all, the first four are redundant and are found either otherwhere in policies or covered under law, such as student gifts and solicitations fall under the ethics law. Yep. Um, student insurance program now has been changed by due to leg legislative things and all students being insured. Um, Guidance program is repeated somewhere, and the basic instructional program comes out of Mass Core. So yeah. those are kind of all taken care of. The public comment one is the one that's received the most um, questions. And right now, I have it sent back to the school attorney. To, well, sent to the school attorney because these came from MASC, which gives us guidance through their legal attorneys. Um, 
on policies we should change, remove, and, and update. Um, this particular one, if you read through it, um, it talks about, you know, the red is the new areas, the crossed out is the removal of the old areas, and the black type is the old areas. So um, reading through it, the other committees had a problem with, you know, giving our small size of meetings, and usually there's only one or two people, we want to be able to keep it casual. They want to put in language that the chair has, can suspend the can suspend the policy for public comment so that you don't have to fill out the, you have to, you have to sign in and all this kind of jazz. Um, when you have the, the head of the select board or the head of the finance committee sitting there, we like to keep it casual. Um, so I sent it back to, I was talking with Adam Dupre on this, um, your counsel, and he said he has problems with some of the other language in it. Right now he's in the middle of doing a lot of MOAs with all the teacher groups around us, but he's going to end up giving MASC a call to understand um, you know, what their language was about this. The only thing, I, and I said it in the other meetings, but just in case some people are watching one meetings and not the other meetings, some people were concerned that, boy, this came out right after we had some more larger public input because of the contract negotiations. That is not the case. There was a, this is change in policy came out of a, either a Worcester or Eastern Mass case where there was some, um, there was a problem with people hijacking meetings, I believe is what I heard, and not allowing the school committee to do business. So they needed to tighten up, you know, and the chair was trying to get business as usual and, and then they realized they had to tighten up the policies to follow the law. So um, it just so happens to be the same year that we've happened to add more public comment than, you, than we've normally seen. So I'm just saying that we didn't, ask MASC to, to update this policy for us. So, um, so anyways, so that one's on hold. I sent out to Adam, so we're not gonna vote that one either way. I think you're in the first reading of this. We have a series of other policies that you did the first reading on that are not listed here. And so we'll just put that onto the next school committee meeting and we'll vote those at the next meeting. Again, most of them are just cleaning things up. So, um, so we'll just put it on to the next, the next thing there. So I say those other ones, I kind of went over them. So that's your first reading and we can move on to the next thing on the agenda. All righty, sounds good. So we're on to the new business then, um, which is discussion of school choice recommendations. Take as yeah. many as you can, Kristen. <laughs> yes, this was, you know, this was done before. This was done before. Thirty this was done before, uh, before we were gonna knew we were gonna be out for so long. Yep. Uh, now that you say that, Elaine. Come on. Um, yeah, so um, I, I'm uh, hitting for eighteen or nineteen per class. Um, so. Did everyone get this ahead of time? I think Donna sent it right, and I sent it the other day. Yes. Kindergarten, no less than six. Grade one, no less than five. Grade two, no less than three. Grade three, no less than five. Grade four, no less than three. Grade five, no less than one. That's a high number. Um, and grade six, no less than one. Again, a high number. So a total of 11, 14, 25 school choice openings is what I'm recommending. So by law, we just need to, this is a one we kind of put on the, the agenda just to kind of get out of the way, but by law each year, the school committee needs to vote to be a school choice school and um, with recommendations of the amount of students that are taking in. That second part has kind of been changed in the last year. It used to be you just a school choice school or not. And then, you know, the school committee would just get more information on whether or not, um, you know, where the numbers were going into, but, um, they've since kind of increased it. Now you have until June first to determine if you were a school choice school, and so um, the actual law says if you don't make a determination, you're automatically a school choice school. But um, that's why we just figured we get it out of the way here tonight. And I have eight waiting. I have eight waiting for responses um, of school choice applications so far. So that's great. So Darius, we need two votes: one to be a school choice. Oh, we lost Bill. Uh, one to be a school choice school and a vote then to approve the ones recommended. 
Is that accurate? No, I think you do it all in one. Just say we're going to be a school choice school using the recommendations under Kristen. That okay. Kristen gave, you know, so um, can I get a motion to make us a school choice school and to approve the recommendations by Kristen? So moved. And second? I'll, I'll second it. All righty. And roll call, Denise? Approved. Bill? Yes. Michael? Yes. And I approve. So, all righty. It's unanimous. All right. Let me see if I can get my agenda back up here. Um, so we're on to reports. I'm not sure if we have any other reports. Or Kristen, you have a principal's report, right? I do, yes. Okay. I think that's the only report we have, so. Excellent. And okay. That's a so I'm not as tech savvy as Darius, so I'm going to look at a different screen. So if you have questions, just shout. Um, so I'm really proud of the work that the Hamley Grammar School staff is doing Um we ended school on March 13th and we came out full speed on March 15th and continue to keep um, the pace and attention of the students and families pretty rigorous. Um, so, you know, some people are talking about April break. Our staffs have been at it for five weeks and they're, they're actually tired. They're going to enjoy the break and be ready to get back. But, so we started off when it was a shorter um a shorter closure with just connections. We were talking about connection, connecting, 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 connecting. And then when we found out that it was going to be longer, we moved to connections through learning. And it was a real flawless transition because the parents were really ready for it. The kids were ready for it. Um, so initially what we did was we got out Chromebooks and iPads. We've handed out approximately 50 Chromebooks for the older kids, iPads for the younger kids, so that kids could access Google Meetings and um, Google Classroom and various other things. We also initially did a call blast where the entire uh, school, everyone signed up for three or four kiddos, and we just took a day and we called kids, checked in, see how they were doing, and took notes on that, so we made sure that we touched base with every student. Then we did a letter blast. Um, and we had pictures from Read Across America that came in like two days after the kids left. So we mailed all those out to the students so they got a little treat in their mailbox. Um, and so we started off with just connecting um, as much as we could possibly connect. And then we moved quickly to the learning part. Um, we have a rule in our school that if you don't hear from a child in three days, if they don't show up to Google Classroom or they don't hand an assignment, that the teacher notifies me and um, one of us gets in touch with the child or the parent. And our um, attendance rate has just been phenomenal at all the Google Hangouts. The teachers are doing a lot of Google Hangouts, um, fourth, fifth, and sixth. We're trying to keep kids really busy, but in a positive way. We've been telling parents over and over again, do what works for you. And the parents are appreciating the Google, Google Hangouts because a lot of them are working full-time from home as well. And also, they don't have the time to really homeschool. We don't want to look at this as a homeschool situation. We've been clear about that from the start. We want kids to be doing things that they know how to do, that maybe they have a lesson and then they try it. This week, we have added help sessions because we heard from some of the parents in the upper grades that, you know, I really just don't even have time to stop and help. So we've added some... Google Hangout help sessions. We have um, we encourage kids to send us pictures of home activities, things they're doing at home. So kids send us and parents send us things that they're doing at home, planting gardens, things like that. Our teachers um, have office hours every day. We're using Class Dojo. That's been a great resource for us. Emails, Google Classrooms, um, and we also have had quite a bit of delivery of packets and books. Um, Paulette Lovechuck has gone all over Conway and then some to deliver books and packets. Our wing staff have gone all over Franklin County to deliver um, things for children, and so have other staff. We have weekly staff meetings. We have weekly instructional assistant meetings. Um, so our plan is that students have three hours of school a day, and that might look like you start each day with a morning meeting. So for example, Jen Wheeler has nine o'clock morning meeting every day. They have a little morning meeting, they do their little greetings, and, and the attendance is amazing. 98% of the kids show up every day. 
And then she does a little math lesson. They do a little reading. And then there's a menu for um, kids to choose from what they want to do um, next, you know, on their own when they hang up from Google Meets. The other thing that we've added is we've added, um, with the idea of keeping kids busy, we've added all our special subjects. So Arlene, Mrs. M, she is amazing. She's doing phys ed classes, Google Meet phys ed classrooms with every single class. She has a gym set up in her, <laughs> in her living room and she has phys ed classes. Um, Kate is doing technology mm -hmm. classes with the kids. She's been doing um, escape rooms with the classes. So that's in addition to the three hours that the teachers are offering. Um, and our art teacher, music teacher, they're putting things up for the kids to do. In addition to that, a lot of our IAs have started recess time with the kids. So they have each grade come for recess. And it's a time just for kids to socialize, which they love because you know, when they're with the teachers, they're usually doing a lesson or they're doing a meeting of some kind. So they've been doing um, recess with the kids. Megan Carr has been doing um, band lessons. Our strings teacher has been putting out some strings lessons. Uh, so I just happened to be on one day. I was just floating from thing to thing. And I there was this fifth grade girl who... I popped onto Paulette Lovecheck's group at 8.30 in the morning and the student was there. And then I hooked, hopped onto the um, nine o'clock fifth grade class meeting and the stu same student was in there. And then Mag Maggie did a beautiful math lesson and the student was in there. And then later on, Maggie did some small groups of writing. So I saw the student there. And then I watched Mrs. MP M's PE class and the student was there. I'm just trying to give you an idea of the day. And then at two o'clock, I hopped onto Megan Carr's um, band lesson, and the little girl was there doing her flute. So she was literally engaged with school from eight thirty to two thirty, um, and which I'm sure both of the working parents really appreciate that as well. Um, so we're we've really been trying to keep kids engaged. The attendance has been amazing. Um, we have weekly special ed education meetings so we can check in on every single child on an IEP and what we're offering them and what they're taking. The IAs have been great. They're doing read-alouds with kids. Like I said, they're doing recess. Uh, we've put out some professional development activities for um, all of the staff to do in their downtime, although they're not having any downtime. And um, I had initially had a full parent meeting where we did pre-K to three, and then we did four to six. But just last week, I met with every single grade level parent meeting. I wanted to find out how it was going, what we were doing well, what we could improve on. And those meetings were really great. And then this week we're gonna, by Friday, we're gonna send out a video that the whole staff is doing. Some of you might've seen that. Um, the whole staff is doing a little part of the video. Brenna Bean's putting it to music. And so we're sending out that out to the kids. So, whoo, <laughs> we're tired. <laughs> this is much more tiring than teaching and being with the kids every day. We miss the kids, but I love seeing their little faces on Google Hangout. And, um, they're very happy to do it. And like I said, I, today I went, I just did random peek-ins and 98% of the kids are, are in class and maybe two one day and maybe not the next. And we've given parents permission to do what works best for them. Again, it's not homeschooling. It's, you know, um, distance learning it's learning opportunities so we're trying to not to put any pressure on the families um but we really want kids engaged and we want them coming to things so that they are engaged and they still feel connected and i told the staff that i really think they're really knocking it out of the park really doing a great job kristen i'll just say uh that one this is amazing but um i think it's a really it's a tribute to the type of uh, school climate, culture, community that the teachers and you have fostered. Um, because we needed to, ha you have to have a stellar community before an event like this happens to pull something off at this amazing level that you all have. So thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. I saw an adorable picture of your daughter waiting for Miss Wheeler to drop off, you know, distance. Kevin, they're keeping their distance, yeah. waiting for Miss Wheeler to drop off her materials because Jen did a drive around and there was a cute picture of her in the window just waiting for a teacher that your wife took. It was absolutely precious. <laughs> just looking and out she, the window, uh, Wheeler. As soon as the packet got there, she just tore right into it and did all the puzzles and all kinds of stuff. So. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, there's been some amazing stories of above and beyond. If you want one that'll make you cry, Kristen, you got to tell a story about the birthday. Why am I forgetting that? From, um, I'm trying to have to do a hint without kind of going, um, someone help celebrate a birthday with a scavenger. Huh? Oh yes. Oh my goodness. How could I forget that? That, that one I cried at. So, um, we have a student who, um, d you know, they don't have, you know, one of the con students that we would con be concerned about lovely, lovely, him, but you know, um, the, they don't have a lot and internet connection is difficult and they're doing the very best they can. And two of the um, teachers went out and um, all around her yard did a hid gifts, you know, social distancing, hid birth, little birthday gifts, little birthday trinkets. And it was a scavenger hunt. One led to the other and the little girl um, came out and she found the one and then it led to the another. And it was this whole birthday um, for her and they did it. Without the only I found out because the mom emailed me to tell me about it. They weren't even going to tell me that they did such a an amazing thing, and I was crying when I heard it because this is the kind of things that they're doing every day, going around delivering things, and you know um, the birthday the birthday for the child, and yeah, really just amazing stuff. That's awesome. My my kids just started school this week, so. You guys are so ahead of the game. They, you know, just just started, and they're they're busy maybe two hours a day, if that. So definitely, you guys are way ahead of the game. You know, our our parents in general, again, they they don't want to do homeschooling, and they want their kids to be engaged and you know in school. So I think the addition of the the teachers now have a schedule that they put out, so the kids know when everything is, and it's. Cons more consistent and then activities that they can do but the with the addition of the special subjects and and the um recess times and there's a couple teachers that are doing uh lunch groups and um ias are hopping on and doing read alouds and inviting kids that's just added more hours to the kids day and i and i don't mean that in terms of keeping them busy I mean, they're meaningful connections they love spending time with mrs m you know they think it's pretty cool that she has a, a gym set up in her um so it's not it's not just busy work stuff. It's it's about connections and being connected, and the kids really like coming in. <laughs> it was, it's funny to watch her do that. Uh, Mr. Gifford just you know I'm going in tomorrow because he went in today and made huge packets of things for his students' books, and he has in um, uh, protractors and you know colored pencils and this and that, and they're carrying you know remember the wax museum Elaine that the kids do. Well, he's carrying on with that. We're doing that I, remotely. So the kids that for a day are going to dress up in character and they're going to give their biography. And we're still going to do our talent show, which the kids are really excited about. So we're still trying to, you know, do all of those things as well. That's awesome. Yeah. And I agree with Michael. It's really a testament to the school climate and culture that they're able to jump on board like that. It's just really... Very impressive. So please share that with them. That the I sure will. Very impressed with their efforts. So I will. I sure will. Thank you for that. It was just neat to listen to all that and just to listen to the structure being put in place, put put in place, and the sense of normalcy in such a crazy abnormal world right now. So yeah, it's pretty you. amazing. You know, we have a staff meeting once a week, and everyone hops on and they're muted. You know, and then I we go through. You know. We're upping it a little bit and we're upping it a little bit and then they take it and then we meet and then he, next thing you know, they're full speed ahead of whatever I, you know, we put out there. And, you know, at the end, we're all talking and chit chatting, but it's sort of business. They get to work and then we open up and we have, you know, a little chit chat. We, we had a staff. We're having a staff social gathering every Friday at four o'clock, which is great. It's just we. You know, there are about 25 people on Friday and we just talk about our week and it's really it's it's really great you know um we um you know I love that staff so much and those kids as you know but I they as I keep telling you they just get better and better you give them a crumb and they you know they have a cookie you give them a little piece of this and they have that you know they just they're just really amazing I'm very lucky 
Well, I think it also really provides, like they were saying, the sense of normalcy and routine for the kids, which is really going to help them. You know, kids that are might be kind of anxious or at risk, mm -hmm. this will really help them get through this, you know, and, yeah. the, and the parents too, you know. Yeah. So it's definitely yeah. a gift to the community to have a sense of routine and normalcy yeah. in a really crazy, crazy time. So. Yeah, and we also have told parents, you know, if you wake up and you have a day where you want to go for a hike and you're just not going to do the school thing, to, that's okay too, you know. Um, but you know what I'm, I'm hearing is that kids want to, you know, they, they've been wanting to join and they like seeing their classmates and they like seeing their teachers. And, um, so. Sounds great. I and think. also, we're e you know the upper grades. The kids get emails themselves with their schedules, so they're learning how to take responsibility, how to check their email, how to how to um, how to uh, schedule themselves. And then you have kids doing you know things like in the upper grades, you're doing like Khan. I had one kid telling me that um, he just did, did a pre unit on physics, which I which I believe. Um, but I think kids are going in places that sometimes they wouldn't have the opportunity to go to during a regular school day. This is going to teach us a lot. You know, it's really going to teach us a lot in terms of kids are taking off with their own interests and they're going farther and farther. Um, I'm not hugely worried about the majority of kids when we get back. I'm just not. There's a, there's a small cluster that we're going to work really hard and they're going to be fine and everything's going to be okay. But in general, I'm not, I'm not, in a panic about sort of, I've missed them, I want them back, but I'm not in a panic about the delay because they're doing so many great things, you know. You're preparing it's a different type of learning. It is, it is. We had a couple parents say to us, okay, um, at some of my parent meetings, you guys are, you know, doing great, but please, please, I know it's vacation week, so we've actually arranged different things for different kids because the parents are begging us to keep them engaged over the vacation week, so we've done packets and different things for different kids. Um, but I, I do think weeks, you know, we after week five, we just need a little, little break, and then they'll go back to what we're doing, hopefully get back to school soon. That's awesome. Any other questions for Kristen or any other business we need to take care of? It does not look like we need an executive session this evening. Uh, so I am looking for a motion to adjourn. Elaine, can I mention one quick thing? Because you sure. haven't heard much about this. Okay. So um, as you know, Louise Law retired, and I know she was really beloved in the district. But I'll tell you that Kim McCarthy has been great to partner with in leadership. She's, she's a new curriculum director. Um, she's really been, she's been fantastic. She has a calmness. She's highly intelligent. She's helping us lead the way. She's sort of behind the scenes, but you can't imagine the work that she's put in and, and how she's helped us lead sort of every step of the way. So I just wanted to sort of give a shout out to our school committee because because we haven't I haven't said much about Kim, not because I just it just hasn't you know, I don't know why she's been great since the day she took the position. But I just wanted to let people know that she's just been phenomenal to, for Conway Grammar School and for me as a principal. Really great. Well, and she had big shoes to fill. So that's awesome. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. That's great. Um, before you close, the other thing I want to point out is that the May meeting is a stack meeting because we get out of budget season technically, according to our original calendar. I think we're probably going to want to move that to have our own meeting on a night. Things take twice as long on video, and um, it, I mean, given the topic, it might be a longer meeting. So um, I, I would say, you know, we'll, we'll try to move that meeting. Plus, it's at seven. We don't need to start these meetings at seven, I don't think. Oh, that sounds good. You don't need to sit at your computer for four hours either in a row, do you, Darius? <laughs> uh, all day long. I'm yeah, getting good at I'm getting good at this. Um, yeah. But so we will. Um, so we'll we'll pick another date probably that week, unless we get more information earlier. We'll try to go as early as we can. Is once we have good information, we should start talking about it to give us as much time as possible between then and the whatever the projected town meeting date is, and then. Um, well, come come we did change. Uh, yesterday we changed our town meeting date. I should let you know that. It, 
Um, it's a placeholder, but we changed it to Monday, June 8th, which is uh, a, a delay of almost a month from the current date. Hey, Phil, you guys needed numbers from us. In order to get printed, you want two weeks, right? Is that what they basically I'm hearing from everybody? In order to get printed? What? Well, you know, to get it on the warrant properly. How do you guys want to do that? What, what's your... When do you want us to have a corrected budget by? If there is correction needed. <laughs> Stay positive. Yeah, um, I, the sooner the better is the answer to that. Um, but yeah. if, if deadlines come and go, then deadlines come and go. I, we're, we're, it, we're, we're good that week, though. That week still puts us over two weeks out from, from the town meeting of the 19th, the week of the 19th or the 18th of um may we'll, we'll we'll pick another meeting night that week yeah i mean it's 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 we the as i read the tea leaves it's unlikely that we'll be able to go forward june 8th but um and i don't i don't think we're gonna have information by that part of may but we'll we'll see yeah um so the other part about it is that town meeting is going to be really long for you guys because sticking around for the stick sticking around for the cpa stuff which is I don't know if I can cram that up front with all the school stuff. So, um, yeah. sorry. I'm working all right. on it. All righty. If there's nothing else, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. I'll make a motion to adjourn. All righty. Second, Phil? Yes. All right. A roll call. Denise? Yes. Michael? Yes. Uh, yes. Phil? Yes. And I am also, so it's unanimous. Thank you, everybody, for your patience and perseverance and all this. And hopefully we'll see you all soon.